Oops. In the previous video, we looked at low frequency magnetic shielding, and, and particularly we're like we were looking at a 60 hertz magnetic field. Um, today we have a similar setup. We've got a signal generator generating a sine wave, only now instead of 60 hertz, it's a 10 kilohertz sine wave that we're generating. That's driving a primary coil. Uh, the, the current flowing at 10 kilohertz in the primary coil is creating a magnetic field. That magnetic field passes through to the secondary coil and, and around. And so we're, we have a time varying magnetic flux passing through the secondary coil that's inducing a voltage that we're picking up on the oscilloscope. Um, just as before, we can put materials between the primary and the secondary coil and to look at the ability of that material to block that magnetic field. Um, last time we started out with Teflon, so I'll do that again here. We have some uh, 62 mil thick Teflon and we put it between the first coil and the second coil and as you would expect it's invisible to the magnetic field. We get no magnetic field shielding from Teflon. The next material we looked at last time was copper and this is 21 mil thick copper. We put the copper plate between the two fields and at 60 hertz when we did this it had no effect. The, the 60 hertz magnetic field passed through that copper plate as though it weren't even there. Um, however, at 10 kilohertz, we're seeing a much different effect. We're seeing that we definitely do see significant attenuation. And this attenuation is not due to the high permeability of the copper. Remember, copper has a permeability close to that of free space. So we're not capturing magnetic flux lines and rerouting them out to the side. The reason that the copper is effective in this case is because at 10 kilohertz, as the magnetic field passes through or tries to pass through the copper, we induce current, circulating currents in the copper, and those circulating currents in the copper generate flux that opposes the incident flux. And so as we go higher in frequency, um, we get to the point where the eddy currents become strong enough to block the, the incident magnetic field. So now we're getting significant attenuation of the field but the attenuation is coming as a result of the eddy currents being induced in the copper. And now as the flux tries to pass through the copper, it can't. So it basically is rerouted around the copper. And then as it reroutes around, it'll circle around and couple to the primary coil without ever reaching the secondary coil. So we're seeing significant attenuation from a relatively thin sheet of copper. Uh, we went from uh, approximately 1.92 volts peak to peak without the, the shielding material all the way down to 340 millivolts peak to peak with the shield in place. If we want to take a look at brass, this is uh, um, some 50 mil thick brass. Brass is not quite as good of a conductor, but this is a thicker piece we can see that we're down to about 380 millivolts, so it's comparable to the performance of the copper. We've got a little bit less conductivity, but it's thicker. There's some 40 mil aluminum, so a relatively thin sheet of aluminum. And again, the permeability of aluminum is close to that of free space, and yet it works very well because of the conductivity and the eddy currents that we're inducing uh, and we are down to 360 millivolts, so again, comparable to the uh, copper and the brass sheets. That was 40 mil aluminum. Here we've got another sheet of the very same type of aluminum, only it's 125 mil thick. It's a relatively thick piece of material. Let me stick that in there, and, and again, we can't quite get it all the way in between because it's too thick. Uh, so we're reading 440 millivolts. Actually, I, I think the only reason we're even getting that much is because uh, we can't quite get it all the way down between the two coils. Here we have some 63 mil thick magnesium. Again, that uh, works pretty well. We're down to 420 millivolts peak to peak. Magnesium is not a great conductor, but it's a, a good enough conductor. 
Here's the stainless steel we had that did not work at 60 hertz because it, uh, its relative permeability was not high enough. But we stick that between the coils and we see that we, we get some attenuation. We went from 1.92 volts peak to peak down to 1.66 volts peak to peak. So our attenuation is not nearly as good with the stainless steel as it was with the copper or the aluminum or the brass. And that would be related to the conductivity of the uh, stainless steel not being as high as those other materials. Here we have our regular steel, which actually did work at 60 hertz uh, because of its high permeability. We stick it in there and we see that we're down to about 520 millivolts peak to peak. So we're getting attenuation of the field, but this time it's not due to the permeability of the steel, it's due to the conductivity of the steel. Uh, the thickness of that still was 30 mils. If we look at a similar sheet that's twice as thick, so here's our 60 mil thick steel. Um, our couple voltage is 520 millivolts peak to peak. Let me go back and look at what it was with the 30 mil. 520 millivolts. So the thickness of the steel uh, in this case um, it basically had no no influence on our couple voltage. And finally we'll look at our mu metal. This worked really good. This worked really well at 60 hertz. Uh, and then we look at it at 10 kilohertz and we see that, um, yes, we attenuate down to 880 millivolts, um, so it's working. But again, it's working largely because of its, it has conductivity. It has some conductivity. Um, the, the high conductivity tends to prevent fields from penetrating into the material. The high permeability, of course, in, just trying to encourage the, the fields to uh, travel into the material. Um, whether it travels into the material or it's blocked by the material, either way with the uh, mu metal it's shunted around um, to the, the primary without passing through the, the secondary, so um, we, we see some reasonable shielding effectiveness. But the best materials were the best conductors, the, the copper and the aluminum.